I've got a guest joining us right now, and here she is. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. How are you? I am fantastic. <laughs> That's good to hear. I see people rolling in, so let's just go ahead and get this thing started. Well, they, if they missed the introduction, we can post it for them in the uh, uh, Instagram live feed. So hello, everyone. Welcome back to our virtual career day series. My name is Josh Walker. I'm an architect coming to you from, of course, in this time, my home again this week, uh, because like you, we're all living and working and learning from home these days. So if this is your first time joining us, this is our effort at HKS to introduce you to one of the largest architecture firms in the world and the many people it takes to make this ship run. Uh, we design everything from stadiums to skyscrapers, hotels, hospitals, we have over a thousand people who make it all possible. Architects, accountants, interior designers, engineers, human resources, researchers, and everything in between. It really is an incredible organization. So, so far we've talked with sustainability engineer, Mike Brown, uh, and director of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, or JEDI, uh, Giselle Santos Rivera. This week we're pivoting to a guest whose title is a little more straightforward, one you to see a lot around the firm. I'm excited to introduce architect and senior project designer, Adeze Kade. Adeze, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I've started every interview so far the same way. Oh, by the way, everybody, if you have questions as we go along, put them in the comments section. We've got people monitoring that. We'd love to get to them. Uh, but first question, as always, what did you think you were gonna be in high school? Did you expect to be an architect? Uh, and if so, what did you want to do to, what did you do to get here? Um, yeah, I definitely had already decided. It's something that I've kind of always loved doing, um, even from a young age. So for me, I was about probably nine when I figured out that architecture was something I wanted to do. Um, in kindergarten, I was organizing um, kids to build playhouses together and then we'd play house in it. And the teacher thought that was kind of weird and told my mom she should get me into arts and sciences, which I loved. Um, and so it's just kind of been a passion. That's cool. It's good that you found what you wanted to do early. That was my story, but I know a lot of architects like our interviewee last week discovered architecture in college. And so it seems to be uh, about a 50-50 split from everybody I've talked to. Um, what was it about architecture that convinced you that you wanted to be an architect? I just, I had this like affinity to create and manipulate space. And it just was always fascinating to me. I was rearranging furniture in my house growing up as a kid. It was making my mom take me to open houses because I was always curious like how things came together and what bits and pieces. <laughs> I know. Open and like Legos, you know, tons and tons of Legos. I actually have a little Lego set behind me. Um, I can't get enough of it. You know? <laughs> okay. And I don't, so something people don't realize about architecture, I think, and maybe you knew this going in, maybe you didn't, but architects don't design every building type, at least not any, every individual architect does. We, there's a large range of firm and project types that we can specialize in. And so, for example, I do schools. Uh, I don't design any other building type. I'm still learning the, most of what there is to learn about schools because there's so much for every type of institution. So what do you specialize in and how did you find that as what you wanted to pursue? Uh, right now I specialize in hospitality um, and it's something I didn't start out doing. So I've been with HKS for about 15 years and I started out doing commercial buildings and actually even going back, I always thought I'd design mansions and single family homes and that was the kind of like where my heart I thought lie. And I figured I'd come to HKS, I could, they do every single sector except for that one, but I could learn a bunch of different types. So I started out doing um, commercial architecture, office buildings, then kind of got into multifamily, did a little commercial interiors, got to explore. And then I found hospitality and I just loved it. I love creating resorts and experiences. And it's like beyond just the architecture itself, you're creating this whole environment. Um, so that's something that really just drew me in and I love making beautiful spaces. <laughs> And I assume this takes more than one person to do because a hospitality project is a big institution. What kind of team do you work with? Um, it's usually, it ranges from about four to maybe 10 people, depending on the size of the projects. And I've worked on a range of sizes from, you know, a 
60 key hotel to a 1600 keys and keys are like what we call individual rooms because they can be suites or um, you know a single a standard or you have your presidential suite um, so yeah 1600 keys is definitely the biggest project I've worked on and it kind of just depends on the team that is that is a big hotel okay is that like a resort is that does hospitality range from like what I, the best western I stayed in to like something bigger what is what does that really encompass yeah that's um it's a project it's a it has a big convention center it's huge um he very very huge project so yeah that one's not a normal size project but it is it has a huge convention center and a supporting hotel with it so it's that's why it's so big yeah got it okay so you've been in the profession you mentioned about 15 years and that's with HKS particularly split between sectors uh, and you do have job title of architect by your name, which I know is a very specific thing. You have to get licensed to, to call yourself an architect. What all does it take to follow that path? Um, it is, it could be considered daunting. Um, so you have to start out by going to an accredited university. So you could either do a five-year BARC or you could get in, you could do a Bachelor of Science in Architecture, but then you would need to get your master's after. And that's the track that I took. So I have a master's in architecture. Mm -hmm. And then it's about 5,600 hours, which is about three years um, of study afterwards called um, mm -hmm. IDP. I think they changed the name now. Um, mm -hmm. It has like an even cooler mm -hmm. name. Um, and so that's under a lot yeah. So that's under a licensed architect. And so you have to complete those hours. And then there's also tests, which you can take concurrently. And there's um, seven tests when I took it. I think it's six now. And it covers the whole range of architecture. Because to be an architect, we are coordinating all these different disciplines. So you need to know a little bit of every little discipline so that you can make the project come together and make sure that the design intent is being met at the end. So why is the process of becoming an architect so multi-layered why why do they put so many steps in that what's 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 the deal with all that i mean it's it's a very important job you know there's life safety involved you kind of need to understand what you're doing to create this space and make sure that you're not you know just throwing something up that may fall down really quickly and there's a lot of different um we work with like civil engineers and um, structural engineers and mep and all these different facets that go into a building and so since you have, you know, we're in charge of coordinating that with all the different consultants, you have to learn a lot of stuff, but it's easy to chip away at it. Like I just say, like, you just keep going. And then one day you're like, oh, oh, I'm licensed. This is great. <laughs> you know, I need mean, something you never have to do again. So you get that crossed off and you can officially call yourself an architect. <laughs> yeah, that's not how I remember the testing process. I don't remember looking around and just being, oh, I'm done. <laughs> but I get your point. I get your meaning. It, it is... The experience especially goes by very quickly. Um, okay, so if that's what it takes to become a licensed architect, what do you think it takes to be a good architect? Like, What characteristics do you look for in somebody that you'd want to work with? That is a good question. Um, and I feel like it could be interpreted different ways, but for me, what makes good architecture is balancing the art and the functionality of it. Because, you know, the main part of the building is creating spaces that people inhabit that provide a function. And so if you're going to be a successful architect, you need to do it in a way that people almost don't even notice all the thought that goes behind it and just feels right and it feels natural and the spaces flow together and it all makes sense while also looking beautiful. And it's a hard thing to balance, but <laughs> I think when you get it right, it just, it feels good when you're in the space. Okay, so a blend of right brain and left brain. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Um, I know we definitely have people who are both extremes on our project teams, and it's fun to watch them have to work towards the middle to bring the full solution together. Um, right. Personally, I'm more on the, the logical um, engineering side of the spectrum, so I always need a good designer to work with me to bring something to fruition. So it's nice that... Uh, you acknowledge that um, because not every everybody can't do both sometimes. Exactly. Um, but it is nice when people at least recognize the other side. So mm -hmm. now there is a rumor here that architects have to be really good at math. 
Um, so we were talking about how you have to work with engineers and you gotta make sure you put something up that doesn't fall down. Uh, is, did you experience math as a big hurdle towards architecture? Um, no, not really. I mean, I am a nerd on the inside, so I love math. So like, I was like, ooh, okay. formulas. Um, but so for me, it wasn't that hard, but the reality is we don't use as much um, math as engineers do. So we're required to like know some of it, but it's not like 99% of the math I do in the real world is add, subtract, divide, multiply. Like it's not like a huge level of formulas. And I'm, you know, you can always like reference if you're getting into some calculations, you can just like Google's a big help in the real world too. So it's not as math heavy as I think people think it is. I think people tend to think architect and engineer and think that we're on the engineer side and we're, we, we dip our toe in the math area. <laughs> okay. We don't think it's too heavy. I'm sure a lot of people will uh, uh, will find that a great comfort. Now, there is one thing I hear about you that uh, I want to talk about as an aside. It's very interesting. I hear you have a side hustle, and that falls. When I heard that, I wasn't surprised. Like, to be honest, pretty much every architect I know does something on the side. There, I know tennis coaches. Personally, I'm into woodworking as a hobby. I build furniture. I know people who design homes because they can't get enough design in their day job that they want to go do it on the side. Uh, I know people who do jewelry making. Uh, so there's a big range of architecture creative side hustles. Uh, what, what, what's yours and how did you find it? Um, I got into doing fashion um, and actually grew up knowing how to sew, making things. And then it kind of went away and got really into architecture. And then actually when I moved to LA, I uh, started competing with our LA office in IIDA's Haunt Couture. And it's a competition where you are supposed to make these crazy outfits out of basically upholstery fabrics. And a lot of architectural firms and interior design firms participate in it. It was super fun. And I remembered I love to sew. So I started making stuff for myself and my friends and family, um, then started an Etsy shop and then have my own website. And so I design and get to use a different part of my brain than I do for architecture. And it's a little bit more free flowing and I can just kind of nurture my creative juices on different platforms. So I make and sell clothes on my website. It's called House of LVA if anybody wants to look it up. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of my side hustle so I can keep keep the juices going, keep the creative flow. <laughs> yes, because as a senior project designer, I'm sure you don't get enough design. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of is. I warn people before they get into the profession. It's like, don't, don't get too far into this because creativity can be addicting. You know, design can be addicting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your time. That is uh, just about the end of our time allocation today. If anybody's got a quick question they want to drop in the comments, I'm sure we'll get to, we can get to that. Um, but I appreciate you giving us your time today, Deze. That was uh, a great conversation, and I really appreciate the, the perspective that you bring to uh, architecture and helping uh, perhaps people who might be interested find their place in our in our firm or in our industry. Yeah. Uh, oh, we've got a good project here. What's your favorite project you've worked on? Oh, that is a great question. Favorite project. Um, as crazy as it's probably sounds is probably the addition hotel in West Hollywood. Um, it was a crazy project for sure. Um, we worked with Ian Schrager and Pawson's office on that. And um, it was a 90 key hotel. It's in West Hollywood and it has 20 residences on top. And so I have like history in multifamily as well. So I like the combination of doing hospitality project, a hotel project with the multifamily aspect of it too. And it was very cleanly and tightly designed. And so that was an added challenge to make it look really good and have all the stuff behind the wall that nobody ever got to see. So finding that like beauty and balance was a nice challenge and sometimes stressful, but when I got through it, it was just like, it's really great to walk through the space and be like, wow, this is awesome. So. <laughs> uh, one other question I see come up, uh, what does it take to be an interior architect? And this might actually be a good uh, opportunity to distinguish architecture and interior design. Yeah, um, so it's a little bit different track. I, their testing system, which I'm not that well versed on, is a little 
less intense. Um, and it really does focus more on the interior spaces. I did commercial interiors for a while and a lot of the work that goes into it is very similar between an interior architect and an architect. Um, but one of the major differences is that an architect can do interiors and interiors architect can't do the other way. Um, and it, it's really like the focus is different. So you're really focusing on how the layout is, the programming of the space that's usually inside of a building that already exists. Interesting. Versus doing more ground up stuff. Okay. Well, that does bring us to the conclusion of our time today. Uh, I appreciate everybody who submitted questions and tuned in for this. Um, don't forget to follow this account for another interview next week. Can't tell you who it is yet, as usual, uh, but we'll look for an announcement soon. Maybe this seemed like a good fit for you and you want to meet the kinds of people that Adese works with, or maybe this wasn't your cup of tea and you want to figure out if there's something else that might be a better fit for you. Either way, we'll be back here same time, uh, 11 o'clock next Tuesday. Uh, also remember this video will go live on our story here in a few minutes and our Instagram TV either this afternoon or tomorrow so you can share with friends and family and uh, teachers that you think need to know about this. Uh, and if you have any follow-up questions, you can comment on our posts and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks again, everybody, and stay safe. Thanks, Daisy. Bye. <laughs>